Assalamu alaikum all, welcome back to my channel. I pray that you are all in the best of health and Iman. If you are new, welcome. My name is Nafisa and I hope you guys are having a brilliant Ramadan so far. I hope you're taking it easy, but still getting things done, still being productive and meeting with your goals. So guys, this Ramadan, I have decided to introduce a new um i don't know kind of series to my channel and this series is going to inshallah continue for future ramadans as well where i'll choose a certain topic and i'll just break it down and cover different areas of that topic and i'm going to incorporate it into the vlogs because i know a lot of you guys are interested in just curious to know um what i get up to during ramadan and i really want to make it beneficial you guys know I have I've got my visions for this channel this is a this is a productive channel we're not just doing things for the sake of doing it so inshallah um, the topic that I've chosen to speak about this Ramadan is improving character improving our character as a Muslims so each day I'm going to cover a different topic that relates to character and how we can improve it and things to avoid so on and so forth and then for the rest of the video is going to be much more vlog style so on and so forth so this is going to be kind of like our like a mini virtual halakha session for about the first five to 10 minutes of the video so I hope you guys benefit from that and I'm really excited to bring that to you and okay lying we've all lied before at some point in our lives anyone who says they've never lied in their whole life just did <laughs> um, but subhanallah it is a aspect of our character that we really ought to avoid some of us may or may not know that there are only three cases in Islam or circumstances or situations in which a person may be permitted to lie. That is confirmed in an authentic hadith by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that was written in a tirmidhi that there are three cases in which a Muslim may be permitted to lie. The first one is in the case of a man who lies to please his wife. Now, guys, let's not take that out of context okay that doesn't mean that you're just lying to your wife here and there about absolutely everything it's more of a case of you know sometimes if she asks you like you know do i look fat in this and uh, you know she's trying to look slim you can say no babe you look you look beautiful in that <laughs> and you know happy wife happy life um so yeah in the case of, of a man who's just trying to keep his his wife happy not on major things lying about just some little minor things here and there so a man who is trying to please his wife can tell little white lies here and there can the second circumstance in which a muslim may lie is in the circumstance of um a war i'm not familiar or i i'm not versed on the details of that so if you have any questions relating to that please forward it to an imam or someone or you know a scholar or someone with a much more far more higher level of knowledge than i am I, i'm just a normal person like you trying to learn as i go um so that is the second case the third case in which it may be permissible for a Muslim to lie is in order to bring peace between two people who are arguing, two believers who are who are um, who are fighting or arguing or are not um, on speaking terms. And again, all those three cases we have to take very very cautiously. These are kind of just small little what you know in English is called white lies. They are not lying about major things because as you and i know lying has caused many many griefs in the lives of other people um and one of the biggest issues that we have with lying is not only is it a continuous act so once you lie about something you've then got to lie about something else to in order to keep up that first lie and then you've got to lie about something else and you you know it's kind of like a perpetual road the other really um harmful thing about lying is that it causes people to not be able to trust you and it brings to mind i i remember when i used to um work in one of the schools as a teaching assistant i remember one student he always used to like to joke by lying so he would pretend that something severe just happened to him and then when you come to help him he'd be like oh ha 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 i tricked you i'm just joking and it got to a point where if a situation was to come up to where he really needed help 
you might not go and help him. I mean, as teachers, we would either way because, you know, safeguarding and all that. But it just leads you, it just leads people not to be able to trust you as much. So what I want you and I to do and to think about during this Ramadan is to question ourselves and ask ourselves, what is our default position when it comes to our speech? Are we the type of people who just lie on a regular basis? In order to figure that out, you're going to have to monitor the things you say, the way you respond to people when they ask you questions and the things that you tell people. So monitor that for the next day or two or three or the next one week and be honest with yourself. I feel like my motto personally for this Ramadan is just being brutally honest with me, with myself, with my issues and figuring ways to improve myself. And I think that could be beneficial for anyone out there as well who is just on the self progression journey, self development journey. So ask yourself, what is your default position when it comes to your speech? Are you the type that lies a lot or are you the type that tells the truth a lot? Because one of the other um, downfalls of a person who lies a lot is that after you passed away when the angel of death comes and takes your soul away and they're trying to register your soul you will be called by the names or your soul will be called will be called by the names that it was most known for in this life so if you're known to be a liar and you lie a lot in your speech then you would be called so and so so and so so and so the liar or so and so so and so so and so meaning the different names and attributes that people attributed to you in this life that were actually true so so and so so and so so and so the truthful one and we know from the example of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is that he was known as al-amin he was truthful and you could place your trust in him so truthfulness should be a characteristics that you and i adopt this ramadan we really should try our best to avoid lying as much as we possibly can fasting is not just staying away from food and drink it's also staying away from all of the haram things that come in the way it's also staying away from smoking it's also staying away from lying it's also staying away from committing zina it's also staying away from displeasing your parents so on and so forth right so we really have to fight our nafs and try the best that we can to avoid the sin of lying especially this month of ramadan and also to carry that throughout the rest of our lives the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is known to have said in an authentic hadith that beware of lying for lying leads to wickedness and wickedness leads to hellfire now let's think about that for a second beware of lying why because lying leads to wickedness and it does for the most part lying does lead to wickedness it means someone along the way is going to get hurt the one telling the lie is hurting his or herself because of the lie that they are telling and therefore a sin is written for them or a black stain is placed and covered upon their spiritual heart which keeps you away from being able to see the truth and pulls you further away from Jannah and drags you closer to the hellfire. So we want to avoid it as much as possible. So the Prophet Wasallam is saying it leads to wickedness and wickedness leads to hellfire. And again, it goes back to the point that I made earlier on about lying just kind of being like a path. It's a way. It's not just something you do one time and it only had one effect. It usually leads to something and that something is usually the hellfire that something is usually harm either to yourself or to someone else and ironically guys i was reading the quran this morning um and i came across a verse in surah al-baqarah so if you guys have a quran there with you or on your phone if you're traveling whilst you're watching this then kind of just follow through with me i'm on surah al-baqarah and i'm going to read through the verses from verse 8 to verse 18 and it was very profound what I found in these verses and I thought it would be beneficial for today's topic. I'm going to recite the um, translation um, because I don't, I don't want to recite Quran on the internet because <laughs> um, I would have to use Tajweed and beautify my voice. Anyways, so verse 8 begins where Allah says, 
of the people, there are some who say, we believe in Allah and the last day, but they do not really believe. Vain would, would they deceive Allah and those who believe, but they only deceive themselves and they realize it not. In their hearts is a disease and Allah has increased their disease and grievous is the chastisement they incur because they lied to themselves. When it is said to them, make not mischief on earth, they say we are only ones that put things right. Of a surety, they are the ones who make mischief, but they realize it not. When it is said to them, believe as the others believe, they say, shall we believe as the fools believe? Nay, of a surety, they are the fools, but they do not know. When they meet those who believe, they say, we believe. But when they are alone with their evil ones, they say, we are really with you. We were only joking. Allah will throw back their mockery on them and give them a rope in their trespasses. So they will wander like blind ones to and fro. These are they who have battered guidance for error, but their traffic is profitless and they have lost true direction. Their similitude is that of a man who kindled a fire. When it is lightened all around him, Allah took away their light and left them in utter darkness so they could not see. Deaf, dumb and blind, they will not return to the path. These particular verses of the Quran is actually referring to the hypocrites and Allah showing us one of the characteristics of a hypocrite. And one of the main characteristics of a hypocrite is that when they speak, they lie. Lying is just their general default position. I think you and I have experienced, you know, a couple of people in life where you ask them a very simple question and they've just got to lie. And you know that they're lying and it's just like, I don't understand. You're lying is just such a bad habit now that it's just become pointless to the point where even things went that you shouldn't even be lying about you lie about you know and we you and i really need to analyze ourselves and try to avoid that as much as possible because what we don't want to become is one of these people whom allah subhanahu wa is speaking about in the quran who lie to themselves but yet think that they are lying to others and that's one of the effects of lying is that you think that you're hurting someone else or that you're getting away is that you think that you're getting away with what you're doing but actually the only one the one that you are truly hurting by lying is yourself so may allah protect us from that now the verse that really stood out to me the most is verse 10 where Allah says in their heart is a disease and Allah has increased their disease and grievous is the chastisement they incur. That means that the pain that they're bringing on, on themselves is, is huge. That's what Allah is saying here, that they're bringing a huge pain upon themselves by going around deceiving people, being hypocrites, lying, but somehow they don't, they don't see that. And why is it? a grievous pain that they are putting upon themselves Allah tells us and he says because they lie to themselves they lie to themselves so lying is not just something that you do to someone else lying is something that you also do to yourself because you deceive yourself into thinking that you're doing something that's benefiting you when in actual fact it's harming you. And so that's another aspect of lying that you and I must think about and ensure that we're not doing to ourselves. Being honest, telling ourselves the brutal honest truth and working on ourselves, working on our souls, improving the state of our spiritual hearts is one of the most beneficial things that you and I can do for ourselves. And so tell yourself the truth, analyze the state and condition of your own heart, as I will be doing my own, and monitor your speech carefully. Keep the angel on your right hand side busy writing this Ramadan. Make sure it is not the angel on your left hand side that is writing. And every time you're about to tell a lie, 
something in your heart should feel uneasy if you I don't know nowadays some people just feel like some people get a thrill at being able to lie really well. They're like, oh no, she's not gonna find out. I'm really good at lying. Like it's something to be proud of. The fact that you can confirm to yourself that you're such a great liar should be something that you should be absolutely ashamed of. It shows that your heart is hard. It shows that your heart has been darkened and it shows that your Iman is diminishing and your Iman is dying. A person with Iman feels uneasy when they have to lie. They just they're just something that just makes you feel like, oh my God, even before you, you say that lie out of your mouth, you feel uneasy. That is a sign of Iman. That is a sign of Iman. So if you've lost that fear and now you comfortably lie, you can look someone straight in the eye, you forget everything Allah says and you comfortably lie on a regular basis. SubhanAllah. That should be something that we should all work on avoiding doing. So I hope this small or short reminder has been beneficial for both you and I. May Allah make us of those who are truthful and not of those who harbour the characteristics of a hypocrite. Allah, and may Allah forgive us the mistakes that we have done for surely everybody has lied at some point. But what I want to emphasise here is that we do not want to become people who perpetually lie, people who lie and, and deceive all of the time because a Muslim is safe from the mouth of his or her fellow Muslim and that is exactly what you and I should be practising. So I hope you guys have enjoyed that short halaka and now I'm going to get on with my day and you guys can follow me around and see what I get up to. I think we're good. All right, so now I'm going to make... Um, a millet drink called Hausa Coco. Coco is just like a thick millet drink that you know people enjoy having in different parts of West Africa. So the one that I'm going to be making, oh, it's also called um, Ogi. If you are um, Yoruba, Yorubas call it Ogi. But I love the spicy one, and um, yeah, this is like a tradition in our family to have during Ramadan. So I'm going to make this and I'm going to have it with um, a type of bean pudding that is fried and um, to break my fast. Like guys, Hausa Koko with, um, wow, the name is gone. What's, what's, what's wrong with my brain? I'm, like, am I a fish today? Like, I know what it's called in my language, but I'm trying to think of like, what's the English name for it? You know, the bean pudding. Um, akara. Sorry, but it's called Akara, okay? I don't know what the other English name is. So anyways, getting over that little um, absence of mindedness. <laughs> so I poured it in the millet flour as well as the peppercorns and the cloves and also some chopped up ginger as well as chili flakes as I showed you guys earlier on so everything is in there and now I'm going to add in some water and blend once it's all nice and blended you're going to need a cheesecloth or in my case this is actually a piece of curtain <laughs> one of those like really thin curtains you can get from Primark yeah works perfect for this so I'm going to pour the contents of it once it's nice and blended in to the cheesecloth and then just squeeze out the liquid what I want to do is get as much liquid out of the pulp as I can and that liquid is what I'm going to um, use to make the uh, cocoa so once you've done it one time as you can see here you can still get a lot out of it so I'm going to add in some extra water and also squeeze out a whole bunch more than if I just left it with the first batch and you guys will see give it a good mix as I am doing right now and then once I lift up the um, the cloth look at that so there's definitely more to be gained from um, the millet so don't just throw it out once you have done once you've squeezed out your first part Okay, so as you guys can see, I have a good amount right here with me and what I'm going to do is pour it into the um, glass container and I'm going to leave it to ferment for 
about a day or so. So yeah, my cocoa is going to be nice and spicy and ready to be had the next day. So this is the leftover um, parts of the millet. You can even keep this, blend it in with your flour, your millet flour another time. Assalamu alaikum peeps. It's the next day and I am heading out to the shops. Hence why um, everything's <laughs> covered up. <laughs> Ah, I can breathe. Okay, so yeah, I'm going out to the shops just to pick up a few bits and pieces and then come back home and uh, finish up my cooking, inshallah. So yeah. So I popped into Superdrugs to grab a couple of bits and I was actually looking for clear lip gloss but for some reason I couldn't find any. So yeah, I kept it moving and since I was actually in here someone keeps asking me which eyeliner I use so I decided to just browse through and show you guys and it's the one by the brand MUA. Okay, this brand right here, MUA. And I usually use their darkest color eyeliner. So that one right there. So I just thought I'd just use this opportunity to show you which one it is I'm using. All right, after that, I am here to pick up a deodorant and a few, you know, like feminine stuff. So I've tried different deodorants, guys, and ugh, some of them just make me sweat. And I don't like the feeling of like having soggy armpits. So <laughs> I'm still back with my usual Dove. And this time I'm using the roll-ons instead of the sprays. I never used to really like using the roll-ons, but I've somehow gotten used to it. So after that, I'm just browsing around, looking for more stuff that I don't need. And then I finally did get to the things that I did need, which is um, one of these Dove body washes. I love those. Turned out it was buy one, get one free. So I ended up picking up two and then went over to the till paid and continued with my day. Life just reopened here in London. So everyone's out doing their own stuff. I just had to quickly walk out of the stores, buy whatever I need and get out because the music was blazing in there. Everyone's doing the best they can, I guess, to get, um, customers back into the stores and everything but oh wow the struggle's real oh <laughs> listen you know sometimes i think i've been out, i went out yesterday which was the first day that we had out of lockdown and i went out today as well and i do have a very <laughs> highly sensitive sense of smell but i feel like all i can smell outside is alcohol so it is very obvious that since we've been in lockdown the pubs have been closed so alhamdulillah even when i do like go to the market and things like that places like that it's been a nice clean fresh air and ever since yesterday it's just it's just gone down the drain it's just gone down the drain but anyway alhamdulillah picked up all the bits and pieces that i wanted now i will uh, share a few with you guys inshallah so i only went for these deodorant and the body washes i was actually looking for the um what do you call it the body scrubs but i couldn't find any so probably had to order from amazon i made this yesterday afternoon and i'm gonna share with you guys what it now uh, looks like okay so this part is the part that we need that's what's going to make our cocoa even though i'm fasting this smells so good let me put it down it smells exactly like authentic house of cocoa and i love that i needed to leave it to ferment so that we can get that pulp at the bottom and that's what's going to that's what what's going to be our cocoa basically so yeah i can't wait to make that 
Now, let's get to starting up the mixture for our akara or kose. That's how it's pronounced. It's pronounced kose. As I do this as well, I'm also going to be listening to a lecture. This time is going to be one of the lectures from my Ramadan playlist that I have on my um, YouTube channel. If you go into the section that says playlist, I have section of videos there that I want to watch during the month of Ramadan. So I'm going to be playing um, playing one of those from Yakin Institute. So that keeps me remembering Allah. It keeps me in the focus of Ramadan. Just anything to help me remember Allah and to keep my focus on the fact that this is Ramadan. I am fasting and I am trying my best to remember Allah, Allah as much as possible. So I recommend doing something like that for you. If you're cooking, you're cleaning, whatever you're doing, just put a lecture in the background that you can be listening to and get productive, okay? To make the akara, what I've done is I soaked some black eye beans for a couple of hours in water and then I placed it in my blender and pulsed it, okay? So I didn't blend it completely, I just pulsed it and by pulsing it, what you do is you enable the skin of the bean to separate from the bean itself and then you kind of wash it and pour a whole load of water over it and you can strain out the skin of the bean and then you're just left with the bean itself okay so to this i'm going to add a large scotch bonnet you can also use bell peppers but the thing with bell peppers is they soak up a whole load of oil when the pudding is frying so to avoid that i don't use bell peppers anymore but it does add a slightly sweeter uh, flavor to it and of course an onion as well so i'm going to blend all of this together in my blender and then we are going to season it and fry it and that would be our akara At this stage, some people like to um, add like an egg to it or some other stuff, but this is just the traditional way, um, traditional ingredients that goes in here. You just mix it and it's ready pretty much to be fried. Just make sure that your um, oil is nice and hot before this goes in, because again, if the oil's not hot, and you start adding this in, it's going to soak up a whole bunch of oil and then you're gonna end up with so uh, soggy um, corset. So we don't, we don't want that. Zubayr has already walked away from the battlefield. I'm not doing this, right? He realizes that this was a fitna that was caused, and he's, he remembered that incident uh, with the Prophet As Zubayr is walking away, people are following him, and they're saying, what's wrong? And he's saying, Dani, leave me alone. I'm done. I'm not fighting. I, I have nothing to do with any of this battle. One of the khawarid, so I'm about to um, make a purchase for the books that I recommended in my Ramadan preparation video. Um, one of the wives of my uncle wanted me to make a purchase for her. So I just wanted to say to you guys, if you click my Amazon link in the description box down below, it can take you to some of these books that I've recommended. But if you don't have an Amazon account, or you find that it's sold out, then I wanted to recommend Darul Salam, okay? A website called Darul Salam, they do carry both these books, The Purification of the Soul, as well as the Fatawa Essential Ruling for Every Woman. And as for the Quran, with the transliteration, you can get that on eBay, okay? If you don't find it in the link that I've left um, below, 
check out eBay, you'll be able to find it inshallah. I just thought maybe sharing that would be beneficial for you guys. So I hope that's helpful. I have looked on the website, on the Dar es Salaam website and you know what? Some of these books are like almost sold out. So I guess, I don't know if it's because of Ramadan or if they're having issues with stock, but just keep an eye out on that website. They do sell a lot of um, prominent Islamic books. So yeah, hope that was helpful. So that's what I'm gonna sit down and do now. And whilst I'm doing that, I'm gonna listen to a lecture because you know, we're trying to be as productive as we can. So I'm gonna listen to, um, listen to a lecture. Yeah. So this is the tragedy. And his name was Amr ibn Jarmus. And he goes to a Zubair as he's walking away and he follows him. And he walks up to a Zubair. A Zubair says, uh, What do you want? He says, Uridu Suhba. He said, No, I just want to be with you. Uh, I just want to accompany you. I want to be your companion. So Zubair anhu says, Fine. All right? if, if, it's, if it's because you're, you're walking away from this battle just like me, that's fine. But this man had evil intentions. 